Hi, so I am Kristen Kerrer. I am a senior data scientist at Constant Contact currently. Um, I have sort of been in data science for a while. I started uh, my bachelor's degree in mathematics in 2001, and I've always been passionate about math. And um, I realized that there'd be more career opportunities for me if I pursued a master's degree in statistics. And this was before, you know, the first data science program wasn't until 2013. So we're still pre-data science education. Uh, but I went and I got a master's degree in statistics that I finished in 29, 2010. And I've been basically in the field since then, working on, you know, interesting projects across different industries. I've been in the utility industry, working with healthcare data. And then, you know, most recently, for the last five years, I've been doing e-commerce and, uh, you know, I've worked on just a wide range of different types of projects. Great. Well, thank you so much for making time to be on Humans of Data Science. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about was you said you started out with an interest in math and then you felt like it was more of a career opportunities in data and data science. Did, what, what did you have the most trouble with in terms of learning? Because I know data science, you know, it's, it's a rigorous process. There's a lot going on. What, what were some of your challenges and how did you overcome them? Yeah, so math has always come very easily to me. I think one of my challenges was I finished my bachelor's degree in 2004, and then when I decided to go back for a master's degree in statistics, I had taken three years off, four years off from school. Um, and so getting back into that was very difficult to go into a graduate level statistics program after you know, not utilizing sort of really uh, heavy theoretical statistical concepts or mathematical concepts in years was a challenge. Um, and I think that, you know, the big thing for being successful in school is like there's like a really, you know, straightforward formula to that, which is like you just always show up to class, you you put in a true effort in your homework, you seek out resources from either attending office hours or um, going to some sort of tutoring lab and just being engaged, like remaining engaged. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and that's that's what I think helped me to – get to a point where I felt more comfortable in the statistics program was because, um, you know, I was like, if I didn't understand something, I'd give it an honest effort. And then I'd email the professor, like at no point was I ever saying like, Oh, I can't do this. I'm going to give up. It was okay. Who's going to help me? You know, I've done all my Google searches and I'm coming up null. So, you know, um, that's sort of how I progressed there. That's, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so I saw that you recently started a new role with Constant Contact, and I guess you spent several years at Vistaprint. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how your transition went and maybe a little bit about the interview process or the job search process, because I think that really on top of um, aspiring data scientists' minds right now about how to get that job or how to transition into a new role. Yeah, so I actually wrote a fair amount about my experience transitioning into um, a new role. I was actually, so I was previously uh, an analytics manager at Vistaprint, uh, where I did have the opportunity to, you know, do some modeling, do some segmentation using k-means, um, but there was also a lot of, you know, uh, general data analysis and and testing and testing analysis and um, creating PowerPoint presentations. Um, and I wanted to get into a role for my next project that was more heavily modeling. Like now I, I don't do a lot of the ad hoc stuff. I don't actually do the test analysis, but I'm considered a resource when people have questions around testing. Um, and that's, that's really where I wanted to be. I wanted to stretch myself. Um, and so for me personally, I assess sort of where my gaps were. Um, 
you know, a lot of the job descriptions that I saw said Python. Um, and, you know, I've been in R forever, but, you know, these job descriptions, I'm seeing a lot of Python, like I'm going to go learn Python. So I started um, taking courses online to learn Python uh, and really practice my results. And I, you know, I was fortunate enough to have a, a career coach actually who sort of um, taught me a lot of how to present myself in in interviews and the questions that I should be prepared for, those behavioral questions. How do you um, explain a technical result to a non-technical person and like really being able to shine in those areas that are like so important like I think you know a lot of times as data scientists we focus on you know I want to be able to tell you the most like detailed heavily conceptual stuff about this algorithm but at the end of the day you know in an interview they want to see that you know how to just, you know, in clear words, tell me who you are, you know, answer some behavioral questions and, and be able to think about, you know, not just what the calculations were, but what was the result? How did it, how did it, um, you know, affect the business or how did you make decisions based on that output and how did you communicate that and how do you collaborate with other people? Like there's, there's just so many pieces to data science and it's such a broad topic, but you know, if you really work on some of your soft skills, I think that they'll absolutely get you far. Very interesting. So, um, and you mentioned Python courses online. Are there any that you felt were really great that you would recommend to the audience? So I was actually just talking on LinkedIn today, asking everyone uh, what courses they recommend. Cause I'm okay. always, you know, I just, I just love taking online courses and learning in my free time, even if it's material that I've seen before, you know, like refreshers are good. Um, yeah. For me, for Python, I took Python for everybody. Um, it's, I think, the University of Michigan course with um, Dr. Charles Severance. Uh, I actually felt like I was building a relationship with this guy that I was just watching on video. And so it wasn't necessarily machine learning focused. Uh, you know, my experience was I went, I just jumped into Python and I was playing in NumPy and then I started playing in Pandas and I was like, whoa, wait a second. Like I got to back up and learn some Python syntax because mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know, running into these problems that wouldn't be problems if I had like even a little bit of an understanding of the language. Right. Um, and so I took that course. I'm not sure that it's, you know, the best course, but it did introduce me a little bit to um, web scraping and how to uh, build, you know, a database and, and some best practices for generating a schema, you know, mm -hmm. and I've been in SQL for like six years and I've actually helped move, you know, data over to better schemas before, um, but I'd never actually like populated tables myself, you know, so it was sort of a fun, like bringing everything back, closing the loop. Uh -huh. Not everybody would call that fun, but I guess that's why you're in the right space. <laughs> um, so I noticed that you have a blog, uh, kristencare.com, right? Did I say that? Yeah. And I, I read, obviously, being a mom in data myself, the first thing that caught my eye was, uh, I think it was called Moms in Data Science. So yeah. <laughs> uh, can you just talk a little bit more about your experience, kind of the pluses and minuses of being a mom in data science? You know, so for that article, it's funny. I was at um, Halt International Business School speaking about um, – just data science in general. And they, they asked me specifically, like, you know, how is it being a woman in tech or a woman in data science? And, you know, the, the honest answer is like, you know, when I was on the bus three weeks ago, the little shuttle to get over to the data science conference, a guy asked me, what um, booth I was working. And, um, you know, all throughout my career, I've sort of heard like, oh, like you got this opportunity because we have like, you know, gender distribution and, and you're a woman. And, you know, I've heard it multiple times and I see these things um, often. And 
and I really believe in the the cause, um, you know, that people are trying to create equality at the same time. I wanted the article to focus on the positives mm -hmm. um, because I do see articles online um, with the, you know, challenges that women in tech face and they're real. Um, but I think that, you know, I am so incredibly fortunate to be in a job where I have some autonomy or I have like basically complete autonomy on the solutions that I choose to attack the problems that I'm doing. Like right now I just, um, uh, my next article is on um, identifying seasonal customers in the database because the company that I work for offers a subscription product. So I'm able to look at, you know, the engagement, of these customers and fit a time series model for each customer and tag them yes or no are you seasonal so that we can nurture those relationships and and you know start to move towards more personalization mm -hmm. um, but nobody told me how i was gonna have to go about that problem um, and i love the creative aspect of data science and and along with that um you know it it really was when i was pregnant and i saw the number of women that didn't have any paid maternity leave, um, that were having a really difficult time taking off work just to make it to their doctor's appointments and their doctors were making it very stressful for them. And you know, this, this time in your life that's supposed to be really special was actually really stressful for a lot of people because they didn't know how, how they were going to afford to pay for their maternity leave. Um, and that just like, hasn't been my experience, you know, in, in the, not just, you know, at the company that I'm at now or my previous company or the company before, um, at all those companies, I've had the opportunity to have, you know, flexible hours to work from home if I needed it, to take time off, to go to my daughter's dress rehearsal, um, if that's come up or take a kid to a, um, a dentist appointment or work from home when they're sick because like if you don't have kids yet and you have kids someday you're gonna realize they're like always sick um, you know and you know having a young baby my son right now is nine months um, sometimes he sleeps really terribly like really terribly and you know I feel like it's not you know if I was a software engineer I'd have the same opportunities, right? I'd have, there's a lot of other careers. I'm not saying that this is the only career that people have these opportunities, but I'm saying that in this career, um, you know, you, you typically have a, a reasonably flexible schedule. Um, you know, as long as you're delivering value, people are willing to work with you and it's, and it's afforded me a really decent work-life balance. Yeah, that's great. And I totally agree on the kids thing. I, I have two girls and they're actually both sick right now. Downstairs. Yeah, right? I'm sick because of my kids. <laughs> I'm afraid to get sick. I have vacation coming up. I don't want to be sick on vacation. Oh, well, I hope you get better first. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Yes, I, I hope so. We have two, three days left. So I told them, I'm like, be sick now, not on vacation. <laughs> yeah, where were you going on vacation? Bermuda. Oh, fun. Vacation. Yes, it's... Fun. My daughter's fourth cruise and she's not even four, so. My daughter has been on two cruises and she is three. Um, and she's also been to Disney twice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we haven't yeah. there yet. I feel like the little one is too little. I have an almost four-year-old and two-year-old, so. Yeah, so I have a, a three-year-old who'll be four in August and then I have a nine-month-old. Oh. And yeah, my nine-month-old has also been on a cruise. <laughs> yeah. my, my little one was nine months old on her first because I, I literally have a picture of her holding her number nine because I was taking a picture every month so I remember yeah, that. yeah. that's the other thing about data science it pays well um I, I have the opportunity to to go on vacation <laughs> yes you can live live a life so that that's great uh Kristen the last question I have for you today is just what do you like to do outside of data science so on your spare time so I'm actually a competitive pole dancer. 
Ooh. I, um, I've been doing that for a couple years. The last time I competed was, uh, right before I got pregnant with my son. Uh, but you know, for me, it is just fantastic to be a part of a, a community of women. It really is a community. I feel like it's been incredibly body positive, you know, six weeks postpartum. I'm in my shorts and my sports bra pulling and, you know, I don't feel judged. Like I just feel very confident about my body and um, it's fantastic exercise. Before I started, I, you know, I couldn't climb up a pole. I couldn't, you know, lift my legs over my head and go upside down and, you know, and now I can just do some crazy things, um, crazy things. And I'm really passionate about it. It's, you know, I'm going to class tonight. Oh, that's great. I've actually, I took a class and it is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then once you really get it and you like figure out, you know, there's, there's definitely certain ways to move your body that makes certain tricks easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. The teacher to just brute force cool. your way through. Yeah. There's a lot of technique. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for making time for this. It's really been great getting to know you. Yeah, it's been nice getting to know you too. Thank you so much for having me on.